Your Honor, I could go on for hours about my dad, but that's not the main business we're here for today. We're here for a sentencing. A sentencing and a guilty verdict passed down upon by a jury of Andy Brown's own peers. Over the past 10 months, I thought a lot about the two personalities involved in the events that transpired on October 2nd. Ironic, or ironically enough, one thing that strikes me the most is that my father and Andy Brown had something very much in common. They both affected every single person they've ever met. One blurring difference between the two being that my father affected people in a positive manner. There are very few people that have met Andy Brown and weren't affected by him in an extremely negative way. Andy, Andy Brown has touched, and I mean, and, and by touched I mean ruined, two families, dozens of his own friends, and countless businesses and livelihoods without discretion or remorse. I've spent countless days trying to figure out in my own mind just what his decision to execute, and he did execute my father, would actually do in solving his current embezzling allegation. Your Honor, although the jury has given Andy Brown a second degree murder charge, I think it's quite obvious that this horrific event was clearly planned. You do not ask somebody if bullets can be traced when purchased, and you do not take a gun to your job as an accountant unless you plan on one thing and one thing alone, and that's murder. This was clearly a premeditated act of violence, and everyone in this courtroom knows this, whether they want to admit it or not. Your Honor, Andy Brown has repeatedly shown us all he clearly does not belong in society. He does not abide by society's norms or laws, and he still to this day has not shown any emotion or remorse for his actions at my father's office that October 2nd morning. We all sat here for three weeks as he came in, as he came and went every day into his own murder trial and said nothing, looked at no one, not even his own family, and acted detached and distant from the happenings that were going on in this courtroom and countless testimony. This lack of emotion continued through to the very reading of his own guilty verdict. No human being that has a caring heart could perform such a feat for such an extended period of time during such an emotional trial. The jury members themselves cried and showed more emotion than Andy Brown did that at his very own murder trial. How someone could actually look into a person's eyes who had done nothing but try and help him back on his feet, pull out a gun, shoot that person not once, but three times, not just anywhere, but in the very eyes that tried to help him. Then, calmly have conversation with a handful of people afterward without any of them noticing anything was wrong speaks volumes of an extremely sick person. Looking back, if there is one single thing that I could have been at my dad's office that morning for, besides to warn him, it would be to witness Andy Brown hunched over, pretending to dry heave, while trying his best to act like he actually cared about somebody that wasn't named Andy Brown, all the while knowing full well exactly how he had left my father in there. 